Hello, it's Scott Manley here with another bunch of space updates. A lot's been going on and the reason I've not been posting videos is, well, I was on vacation and then I had to go to the hospital, but I am okay now. <laughs> I have survived, but uh, the pain medications are making me a little loopy. So uh, I'm not as lucid as I would normally be. But yeah, what you're looking at here is an RS-25 engine test. If you remember, there was previously a test that was aborted early because uh, there were, you know, flames started shooting out, something failed. Well, this was a full duration test as part of the SLS program. But of course, that's not the engine test that everyone's been interested in this week. Lots of people have been waiting for the static test fire off the Falcon Heavy, which was due to launch today, but the schedule has slipped a little. It's carrying Arabsat 6A, which is a six-ton satellite into geostationary orbit, and it is the first commercial launch of the Falcon Heavy. After several aborted attempts, we finally got the static fire. Of course, without any payload attached. After the static fire, they take it back and then they mate it with the payload. And hopefully during launch, they will be able to recover all three boosters this time. Two of them will be returning to the, lo the landing pads at the Cape, whereas the third will be headed to the drone ship, which is a whopping 967 kilometers downrange. This is the greatest distance that SpaceX has attempted to recover any booster and there will probably be an extra long entry burn to remove as much speed as possible. There's of course photographs everywhere, people have been really excited following this. The current launch window is on Tuesday but the weather has a 70% probability of violation. It'll probably slip to Wednesday when the weather is better. Also, being the rocket nerd, I do want to point out that there's no need to actually put this satellite on a Falcon Heavy. It's more that this was put on a Falcon Heavy because when the contract was negotiated back in 2015, this was the option that SpaceX had. But in the meantime, you know, SpaceX have developed better and more powerful rockets and they've actually launched heavier satellites into geostationary transfer orbit and recovered the booster. Now, they are offering this direct entry into geostationary orbit, but I don't think they're going to use this because the satellite bus they're using is designed to perform the insertion and everything already, and they're not going to redesign the satellite at this point. So while this is undoubtedly going to be an awesome launch, and while this year's Falcon Heavy is more powerful than last year's Falcon Heavy, this launch isn't going to use the entire capabilities of the rocket just yet. We're going to wait to see that happen. And while there were a few people staking out the Falcon Heavy to catch it, its engine test, there were thousands of people watching live streams of the Starship Hopper area in Boca Chica, Texas, wanting to see whether the Raptor engine would test fire. During testing, they have to close off the area and the closest cameras are miles away. But uh, yeah, people have just been sitting and watching this. There have been small tests of like the pre-burners. There have been big flares from the flare stack as they detank and have to dump huge amounts of gas into it. And there has been at least two full-on Raptor engine test firing. As of right now, there is only one engine on this hopper. It's supposed to eventually get three. Uh, the third engine they built is currently on a test stand in McGregor. The first one they built is being repaired after being pushed to its limits. But yeah, even Elon Musk has been sharing close-ups of the event happening, showing you can actually see the thing lifting up off the pad, If I think. I mean, we're not really sure, but they say that it lifted up on the tethers. It's actually tethered down to stop it going too far up, because I don't know what kind of control system this thing has. Maybe if it went up, it would just become a missile. I hope not. Anyway, another thing for you to watch this week is Bittersheet. If you remember, about a month or so ago, it launched on a Falcon 9 and has been making a series of maneuvers. Well, it has finally arrived at the moon. It is orbiting the moon and it is now trimming its orbit down in preparation for landing. Landing is currently scheduled for the 11th, so that's Thursday. Pay attention, we'll see if we get a fourth nation to put a spacecraft on the surface of the moon. Over the weekend, scientists launched a pair of Black Branch 12 sounding rockets from Andoya Space Center in northern Norway. These are not particularly spectacular, but their payload, when it interacts with the atmosphere, 
is pretty amazing. So these were tracing uh, auroral activity. What they did was they dumped chemicals. There was tri trimethyl aluminium and a barium strontium mixture. So they go up and then on the way back down, they drop these clouds and they interact with the atmosphere and the sun and they produce tracers which could then be tracked. These launches are part of a much larger campaign involving nine missions, 12 rockets, all launching into the polar aurora where the Earth's magnetic field comes down to the Earth vertically. And there's some great films of this. You go online, look for it. I think Night Light Films are the one. They have a 4K version that looks absolutely amazing. I mean, usually those films are pretty amazing because the Aurora are stunning, but this obviously brought it to a whole new level and added science. And finally, I want to come back to the Indian ASAT story because we've had, obviously we've had a week or so to see how things evolve. First of all, India released this uh, little video explaining what was going on. And it was also realized when it was looked back at uh, their launches and NOTAMs that there was a previous attempt in February, which probably failed. Uh, yes, this is not what happened, but yeah, because when you blow things up, really what happens is you split off tons of debris. You do have the some nice onboard cameras, though. This is, I think this is a camera from the ground, perhaps, showing the event. But you have the onboard camera showing the guidance system. Now, many people have pointed out this doesn't look like it's looking for a target against the clutter of the Earth, uh, which uh, many people take to be or to say that the thing did not come down from above as we were originally suggested but was in fact going upwards because after all it's a lot easier to see a satellite against the dark of the sky than against the light of the earth. Since then they have catalogued about 57 pieces of debris in various orbits, some going up over 2,000 kilometers. So these things will take a very, very long time to decay. When you look at the orbits, yeah, they're scattered around. And the shape of the Earth is, of course, perturbing these into different orbits, stretching them out so that they are going to ultimately encounter various other spacecraft. And as of right now, the Socrates system, which is supposed to track potential impacts between satellites, is already making many close approach predictions. This is a, uh, a one-week request for anything within five kilometers and it came up with 84 possible impacts between microsat r debris and various other spacecraft and of course these are only the objects the fragments which have been observed and cataloged there's a lot more out there that we can't see now that they are cataloged of course we can start tracking them and you can see that they are decaying uh, it's going to take some time for some of these to decay. Some of those will be out there for years. Some of them will be gone within weeks. But, you know, we're, we're hoping that we'll get through this without losing any other satellites to this. So, yeah, those are all my updates. And I guess it's time for me to say that if you are a satellite orbiting through this debris cloud, then, uh, yeah, I am Scott Manley and you should fly safe. Mm -hmm.